Welcome to our lecture online. Here in this example, we're going to calculate using the linear attenuation coefficient, the amount of absorption we can have from a material to protect us from some radiation. Let's say that we have a gamma ray radiation source and it's placed underneath some water. Let's say we have a 10 centimeter layer of water. The radiation coming out has an energy of two MeVs, two million electron volts. And we know that the linear attenuation coefficient of water at that particular frequency of radiation is 4.9 per meters, converted to centimeters is 0 0.049 per centimeter. We want to know how much that attenuates the radiation by the time it reaches the surface. We want to therefore calculate the intensity when the thickness of the material is 10 centimeters. And finally, we want to calculate how thick the material, in this case water, needs to be to protect us from the radiation to the point where we want to get the intensity down to 1% of the original intensity. The equation that we need for that is the following equation. The intensity as a function of thickness is equal to the original intensity as it leaves the source times e to the minus mu times x. Mu, of course, is the linear attenuation coefficient. Plugging in the values, let's see. Yes, we want to do it as a fraction of i sub naught. So i, when x is equal to 10 centimeters, is equal to the original intensity at the source times e to the minus mu is 0 0.049 per centimeters times the thickness 10 centimeters. Notice that the centimeters cancels out and you simply have e to a number. i as x equals 10 centimeters is equal to i sub naught times e to the minus 0 0.49 and at this point we need a calculator. 0 0.49 put a negative in front take the e to the x and notice that the intensity with a layer of water that is 10 centimeters thick is equal to 0.613 i sub naught which means it is 61.3 percent of the original intensity. Well that's not a lot of protection with only 10 centimeters. Let's say we want to calculate how thick the water needs to be if I want the intensity at the surface of the water to be just 1 percent of the original intensity. In that case, I need to rewrite the equation. So when we solve for the equation for x, we get x as a function of intensity is equal to minus 1 over mu times the natural log of the ratio of the intensity that we're looking for divided by the original intensity. In this case, we're looking for x when i is equal to 0.01 times the original intensity which is equal to 1, negative 1 over mu for water is 0 0.049 times the natural log of 0 0.01 i sub naught divided by i sub naught. Notice that the i sub naughts cancel out and we just have to take the natural log of 0 0.01. 0 0.01, take the natural log and divide by 0 0.049 and divide by negative, which means that this, that the water thickness must be 94 centimeters. That's a lot more than 10 centimeters, but that's what it takes to get the radiation down to just 1% of the original intensity. And if the source is not a very strong source, that may be sufficient for adequate protection. If it's not, then you need to make the water level even deeper so that you have additional protection. If you want to get it down to one one-tenth of a percent, and again, you change this to 0 0.001 and do the problem again. That's how we find out, first of all, how much radiation we do get from a source after it goes through a certain thickness of material. And secondly, we can calculate the thickness of material required for the intensity to drop to a particular level that we desire. When you go look for the linear attenuation coefficient in, in books and magazines or... <clears throat> no. When you go look for the linear attenuation coefficient in, in uh, resources, you'll find that often you don't find the linear attenuation coefficient, but you find the mass attenuation coefficient. You find the mu sub m rather than the mu sub l. L stands for linear, m stands for mass. That means you need to be able to convert from one to the other. It turns out 
that the linear coefficient is equal to the mass coefficient times the density of the material. That means not only do you need to look up the value for the mass attenuation coefficient, you also need to look up for the density of the material you're dealing with. To see how that works out correctly, notice that the units for mu sub L for the linear attenuation coefficient, the units are 1 over centimeters. The units for the mass coefficient is centimeters squared per gram. And that is often confusing. You look at that and go, wow, how do I deal with that and how do I plug that into my equation here? But you don't. You simply convert it. Remember that the density is mass per unit volume. Mass would be in grams and volume would be in cubic centimeters. If you cancel out the grams and the centimeters squared and centimeters squared there, you are left over with 1 over centimeters. So you can see how you can convert from one to the other. Look up the mass coefficient, attenuation coefficient, multiply times the density, and that gives you the linear coefficient. And that way, you can solve the problems using these equations when you convert the coefficients like that. And that's how we do that.